So, uh, funny story about the topic of this video, and it's that it was originally intended to be the first video I ever made. No, seriously, here's the proof. Now, you probably noticed that I wrote the script for this video in January, but this video isn't coming out until this month in August. So what happened? Well, the month I finished the script, Nintendo announced the port of Metopia for the Switch, which on one hand I was excited for, but on the other hand, it meant that it would only make sense to not work on the beta until I've played and completed a new port. Oh, and this video is still only coming out two months after Metopia's release because not only was I trying to complete the game, but I also had school and stuff, so, uh, there. But anyways, enough of my excuses. Let me explain what this video is. I'm going to cover the Metopia classes, Chugga Conroy Pokemon Bio style, and explain what each class does, what they specialize in, and even give my takes on the class. But anyways, I've delayed this video for long enough. So let's start with... The Traveler class. No, seriously. Now this is going to be quick because the Traveler class is not playable, and your character will only really be a Traveler for like the first 5 or 10 minutes of the game, most of which will be cutscenes, but I thought I should mention it as the Traveler class does indeed have built-in stats. Before you leave Greenhorn at the beginning of the game, pause the game and go into your character's stats. You can see that the Traveler class does indeed have stats, and these stats are 10 in HP, and 1 in everything else except speed which is 0. But again, there's not much to talk about here since this is a non-playable class. So how about we get onto the classes the game has to offer. At the beginning of the game, the Dark Lord will steal the faces of the people of Greenhorn, after which you are asked by a worried mother to save her child's face. As thanks for accepting this quest, she gives you her family's pendant, which you soon discover holds a guardian spirit who will help you in your quest by offering you six classes to help you fight. And the first of these classes is the Warrior class, wields powerful swords and is skilled in both attack and defense. And as you can see, the stats the warrior has live up to this description. It has a great HP stat, good defenses which only get better as you level up, and one of the highest attacking stats in the game. Granted, it's also one of the slowest classes, but that's the role the warrior plays. It's an offensive tank. Now by looking at the stats, you may notice that there are some different colored squares, particularly next to the attack and defense stat. Basically, the main colors signify the actual stats the class has, while the different colored squares will signify the increase in stats that the class has thanks to its starting equipment. Now onto the move set, and it's a pretty good one. As you'd expect, it learns a lot of attacks that help it do more damage, but does also learn some support skills. Proud Protector will make it so that the Warrior will take a hit for a teammate, which you can often afford to do since the Warrior takes hits very well. Snap Out of It takes a teammate out of a sass effect such as crying or acting aloof, and Super Snap Out of It can revive fallen teammates, though that last one you'll have to wait until much later in the game to access. Overall, the Warrior class is very good, and if you're new to RPGs, I'd recommend the Warrior class to be the first class you choose. It's very straightforward in what it does, and it does it well. Next up is the Mage class. Deals stupendous damage, blasting away enemies with magical might. While the Warrior deals high amounts of damage with its attack stat, the Mage class deals high amounts of damage with its magic stat. The Mage starts with the evened out attack and magic stat, but as it levels up, the magic stat quickly leaves the attack stat in dust. And the skills the Mage learns reflect this. Every single one of the mage skills uses the magic stat. If a skill says magic at the end, then it means it uses the magic stat instead of the attack stat. The mage learns incredible skills such as fire, lightning, and once this thing learns explosion, it's basically a god. And from level 14 onwards, the skills the mage learns are upgrades of these three skills. The mage is a glass can that can outspeed most, if not all, enemies. Just like the warrior, if you're new to RPGs, the mage class is also a class I'd recommend. Is just as direct as the warrior, and my experiences deals even more damage. Up next is the cleric class. The go-to support role tends to the party's injuries with divine magic. If you're familiar with RPGs, then you know exactly what this class does. The cleric class overall has pretty balanced stats. It is a bit frail, but not as much as the mage. It's also one of the quickest classes in the game, so it'll be able to pull off last minute saves almost every time. The cleric specializes in healing spells. Who would have guessed? Healing skills that heal one party member, all party members, and even revive fallen party members. It also learns two offensive skills, those being Righteous Anger and Aura. Righteous Anger one-shots any non-boss enemy when it hits, and Aura is a nice magic attack. The Cleric is more so for those who don't really care about being the main damage dealer, and instead for those who want to keep the party alive. But with the Cleric's decent attack stat, it can still dish out damage when it needs to. Especially when it learns Aura, which is vastly more reliable than Righteous Anger. Now we have the Thief class. Swift as the wind, with a repertoire of skills designed to confound enemies. The Thief class is the first class that isn't as direct as the others. First things first, the Thief class is the fastest class in the game, which is a pretty good quality. Other than that, it has pretty overall balanced stats, but there's something of note of how the Thief attacks. The Thief is the first instance of a class's standard attack hitting all enemies. 
making it great for spreading damage and softening the opponents for your other party members. The Thief learns a good mix of offensive and support skills, though keep in mind they won't actually learn an offensive skill until level 10, but Booby Trap and Huge Trap are a good way to defend yourself and your friends while also increasing your relationship with them. And as a side note, when a move like Backflip says auto at the end, it means that it's a skill you can do on command, and instead it will go off randomly, meaning sometimes it can go off, sometimes it won't. Looking at the Thief class, while it is one of my personal favorites, I do have to admit that maybe you're better off leading it to one of your party members. However, the Thief's ability to hit all enemies on the field goes well with the Hyper Sprinkles which will unlock later in the game. And now we get into the more silly classes that Miitopia has to offer with the Popstar class. Inspires the party with balanced energy and the magic of sound. I would classify the Popstar as an HP sponge. It tends to have the highest HP of any other class and will also have pretty good defenses. Like the Thief, the Popstar standard attack hits all enemies on the field. But keep in mind that's much slower. The Popstar is a support class. Learning skills like Encore to give your teammates an extra turn, Love and Peace to stop quarrels, and Angelic Voice, which can revive multiple fallen party members. But note that's less accurate than other revival skills. The Pop Star is also unique in that it has two different variations to it a male variant that wears a suit, and a female variant that looks like an idol singer. But these variations are just cosmetic and don't change the Pop Star's stats or skills. If your playstyle matches the cleric, then you can also do well as a Pop Star. And the last of the first 6 classes is the Chef class. Cooks up cures and stirs up trouble in equal parts with a trusty frying pan. Another support class, but the Chef is more defensive than the Cleric and Popstar. The Chef has a unique quirk of its weapon also increasing its defense, making it a great support tank. The Chef learns Flambe much earlier than the Cleric learns Aura, making it able to heal and attack much earlier than the Cleric. The chef even learns its own one-shot skill with Monster Dinner. I would watch out for Spicy Dish and Spicy Dinner because it can cause corals, but with skills like Feast and Maestro Cooking, the Chef can be a great support class. The Chef is a great balance between being a support class and an offensive class. So if you don't want to go all in support or offense, then the Chef is a great option. So these are the 6 classes you unlock at the start of the game. However, after saving the kingdom and trying to head to next door, your party is attacked at the night by the Dark Lord. He kidnaps your party and seals away your job, reverting you back into a traveler. But don't worry, because not only does the Guardian Spirit let you choose a new job, but they also give you three new jobs to choose from. So how about we get into those? The first of these new classes is the cat. Dainty paws, cute little whiskers, vicious shredding claws, meowch. While the mage is a glass can that uses the magic stat, the cat is a glass can that uses the attack stat. The cat has high attack and high speed, with average to below average everything else. Like the mage, the cat follows the philosophy that the best defense is a good offense. You'll learn skills like sharpened claws to increase your attack, double scratch to attack two opponents or one opponent twice, and feline frenzy to do high damage on all enemies on the field, along with some support skills like playful antics and steel grub. I would definitely recommend the cat class. In my experiences, the cat is almost always the one dealing the most damage and going first, if not second. So whether you previously had a high damage job like the warrior or mage, or were a support class who wants to experiment with a new playstyle, the cat is a great new job to choose from. Next is the imp, ever the cause of mischief and mayhem, but cute enough to get away with it. While the cleric focuses on healing your party, the imp focuses on weakening the opponent, either with direct attacks or through its various skills. The imp has pretty balanced stats being slower than other classes but usually having a better HP and defense set to make up for it. As I said, the Imp learns a variety of skills that weaken the opponent one way or another. Naughty Pitchfork, Punishing Pitchfork, and Wicked Pitchforks will damage one, multiple, and all enemies respectively. But Jeff causes the party member to do a standard attack another time, the draining moves to steal MP or HP from the opponent, Sweet Whispers causes an enemy to lose a turn, and Demonic Whisper is righteous anger that can one-shot multiple opponents but of course is even less accurate. The Imp makes itself out to be a pretty fun class to play as. Regardless of what situation you're in, with the variety of skills the Imp learns, there's always something it can do. And finally, we have the Scientist. Applies the power of science and technology to aid you in battle. The Scientist is a bit of a mixed attacking glass cannon. While it has better HP and defense than classes like the Mage and Cat, it will still probably be taking more damage than other defensive classes. But the Scientist makes up for this by being tied with the Cat for the second highest speed stat. The Scientist learns skills like Glitch, the formula skills, and black hole, and also support skills that automatically go off like ignite, safety mass, and absorb. Though there's something I should say about absorb. The description, at least to me, would tell me that the party member it affects will recover HP when they're the ones who take damage. But in the game, what it does is makes it so that the affected party member heals HP when they deal damage. Let me know if you also got the wrong idea from the description, or if I'm just reading it wrong. The scientist is one of my personal favorites in the game. Once the scientist starts learning the formula skills, and especially black hole, 
it can rip through enemies, and with its speed, it can defeat enemies or at least soften them up. That's another 3 classes down, but there are still some more left. Once again, after you're done with your business in the next door, and try to head to the realm of the Fae, the Dark Lord will kidnap your new party members and seal your job once again. But like before, the Guardian Spirit will let you choose a new job, and will even offer up 3 new classes to choose from. So let's go over those. The first of these new classes is the Tank. A wicked weapon on wheels, packing a large cannon and plate armor. As you'd expect from the name, the tank is indeed a tank. It has high HP and defense, and is the only class, aside from the unplayable Traveler class, it has zero for its speed stat, and the speed stat will never increase, meaning that the tank will always go last. And before I go on to the skills, I should mention that the tank is the only class that uses MP for standard attack, two to be exact. As for the tank's skills, it learns skills like Human Cannonball, which can cause quarrels, Wild Shot, which can hurt party members, Hot Shot, and the Laser Moves. In my personal opinion, having been someone who had a tank as a party member and played as one, the tank just sucks. I'm sorry for anyone who likes it, but in my experiences, the tank just repeatedly causes quarrels with Human Cannonball, and is too slow, and doesn't deal nearly enough damage to make up for its shortcomings. Next we have the Princess class. Refined. Charming. Elegant. Friend and foe alike shall bow to such majesty. The princess is another support glass cannon. It has a nice speed stat and can do great damage with its even attack and magic stat. When getting into the skills, we can see the potential for the princess being somewhat of an invasion tank with the escort skill, which in my experiences, activates more often than the thief's backflip skill. Along with that, the princess learns skills like regal dance and I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that that can stop enemies from attacking and weaken their defenses respectively. Blindfold can prevent status ailments and the royal wave skills, do great damage and go from attacking one enemy to two to all enemies on the field with each upgrade. The princess is anything but a damsel in distress. While it is one of the more frail classes, its damage output and support skills more than make up for those shortcomings. A true heir to the throne. And finally, we have the flower class. Harness the power of nature to brighten up everyone's day. If you are previously a pop star, then the flower class can be good for you. The flower has the second highest HP in the game and has a great set of support skills to ensure the party can keep the fight going. The fragrance skills heal HP, restoring whistle gets rid of stats ailments, flower power makes a party member angry, which increases their damage output while also making them attack twice, and interestingly, the flower learns life due at only level 4, making it the earliest class to learn a revival skill. While its damage output isn't the greatest, the flower happily fulfills its role as a support class and at least learns decent offensive skills. And I should mention that like the Thief and Popstar, the flower's standard attack hits all enemies on the field. And those are the 10 classes that you unlock in the main campaign of Metopia. However, there are two more unlockable classes that can be obtained in the postgame. First up, by going to the Traveler's Hub and helping people out, you can get various prizes, ranging from food, to money, to even equipment upgrades. However, you may eventually run into a me who is a vampire. This vampire will tell you that their mansion has been overrun and is asking your help to clear it out. By accepting this quest, you'll go to Peculia where you can help the vampire get their mansion back and at the end, you'll find a new pendant. By obtaining this pendant, the Guardian Sparrow will let you know that you've unlocked a new class. And I think you can guess what it'll be. The Vampire Class. This beauteous immortal flourishes the forces of darkness with flair. The Vampire is a mixed attacker with a variety of skills that make it great for endurance battles. Three of the Vampire's skills show this off. Curse hurts the opponent when they hit the Vampire with a physical attack. Revive can bring back the Vampire occasionally when they've been knocked out. Along with also being able to pass on that ability to party members with Enthrall. And Bite can heal the Vampire while also dealing damage. Though I should mention the Vampire takes a while to learn these skills. It doesn't start learning skills until level 7, much later than the main campaign jobs. Albeit, this makes sense since it's a post-game class. The Vampire is good to use. The skills I mentioned are great for outlasting opponents. Learning Revive at level 10, meaning the Vampire might immediately pull its weight after being added to the team. Though whether you make a new me, or make an old party member to your vampire, the vampire will be playing catch up for either food stat buffs and or equipment upgrades. And now, for the final post game class. By going to Galados and defeating the mini boss, you'll get another new pendant. With this pendant, you'll unlock the elf class, an elf of the forest, armed with the power of an enchanted bow. The elf is a weird class. It has a higher attack stat than a magic stat, yet it only learns one offensive skill that uses the attack stat, while the other skills use the magic stat. 
Though to be fair, the elf does seem to be more of a support class that can still offer an offensive presence. Dancing Bow does damage while also causing the enemy to miss a turn. Forest Aegis reduces the damage that a party member receives. And Counter Arrow protects a party member while also hurting an enemy. Along with this, scales like Enchanted Arrows and Hail of Arrows can spread damage to enemies. The elf starts learning skills at level 9, which is the latest of any class. But again, as a post-game class, this makes sense. As mentioned, the elf is a bit of a weird class, with how its attacking skills use its lower magic stat than its attack stat. You have seen the elf in action in the main campaign, through the fab fairies. So if you like the elf then, then you'll like the elf now. But like the vampire, it has the same handicap of needing to play catch up on its equipment and maybe even food buffs if you make a new me. And so, those are the 12 main campaign classes and the two post game classes. I hope you all enjoyed the video and potentially found the guide helpful. I'm really glad to have finally finished this video. While I didn't initially plan on making it my first video, I'm kind of glad it isn't. My first video definitely isn't my best, and I learned a lot from making it. As such, I'm glad this came out to be my third video, since I could use what I learned. I mean, I did mean to make this a second video, but I did all the research myself, so I kind of had to postpone the video for that. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day!